everybody. Um, it's Frequently Asked Questions Friday again. Um, we're here today with Lupe Gonzalez. Uh, you want to say hi to everybody? Sir? Hello, everyone. My name is Lupe. I've been here with Herman Herman for the past 12 years. All right, past 12 years. Uh, Lupe's a, a legal assistant over here. Um, how, how long have you been in the uh, legal field? I would say somewhere between 28 and 29 years. Okay. Where would you start out? I started out uh, at a competitor many, many years ago who I'd rather not mention. Okay. It was not a, it was not a great experience. Okay. <laughs> And then after that? I went to uh, William Holmes for a few years. I worked for um, Joe Brad Brock. And uh, prior to Herman and Herman, I worked for Charlie Webb. Okay. All right. Um, where, uh, where, where are you from, Luba? I'm originally from Alice, Texas. I've been living here in Corpus Christi for the past, I'd say, 25 or 26 years. Okay. And where did you go to school? Went to school in Alice, Alice High School. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. Well, um, let's just get get into it. We're running a little bit late already this morning or this afternoon. Um, we were going to talk about insurance coverages. Uh, let's talk about, uh, say, automobiles. Tell okay. us about the different types of uh, insurance coverage you can have on, on an automobile. Many times people will offer you, or an agent will offer you the cheapest possible price, twenty nine ninety five. get insurance today. While that may be true, people aren't getting the coverage that they need. Uh, many times an agent will tell you you have full coverage simply by selling them liability and collision. But what they tell to what they fail to tell people is that they're not offering personal injury protection benefits, underinsured motorist coverages, rental, towing, etc. There's a bunch of coverages that aren't even offered to people. And people are under the assumption that they have full coverage. All right, yeah. We have clients all the time go, Oh, I'm fully covered, and then we find out they're not fully covered. What they mean is they've got collision and they've got comprehensive right. and they've got some liability. But you know, uninsured motors is vital for everyone to have, especially with the cost of healthcare nowadays. I've yeah. seen hospital emergency room bills in excess of 50000 pretty often, and it gets difficult when you have a $50,000 ER bill and only $30,000 in insurance coverage. What, if you were just to guess what percent of people down here do you think don't have any liability coverage? I'd say about 50%. Is that right? 50%? I think so. Many times people will loan their vehicle to their children or friends, and they don't realize that they're not listed under their insurance policy. So if they have a, involved in a wreck, it's like a, the insurance company will not honor that claim because you had an unlisted or unnamed right. driver in the policy. Or somebody who's specifically excluded. Maybe. Exactly, exactly. Um, all right, well, that sounds a little high to me, but let's say it is 50%. That means if you get in collision, there's a 50% chance that the people that ran into you have no coverage? Or at least limited coverage. Yeah, all right. And so yes. that's the purpose of getting uninsured motorist coverage. Right? right, and I think while the state of Texas only mandates that you carry a minimum of $30,000, with today high-priced vehicles, I think it's important that everyone have bigger policies. For instance, if I go cause a wreck, and I'm covered for, let's say, $25,000 of property damage, and I total someone's Suburban, I guess, you know, insurance company will pay the $25,000, but you're going to be out about $50,000. Right. For These the, Suburbans are expensive, or other high-priced vehicles. Or Cadillac. A or Cadillac, a Lexus. Any Lamborghini. Lamborghini, <laughs> Mercedes, Ferraris, <laughs> the list goes on. There are many high-priced vehicles out there that, you know, may cost you quite a bit of money. Now, now there's there's... Uninsured motorist coverage, and then there's also underinsured motorist coverage. What, what's the difference between those two? Uninsured motorist coverage is when the person that hit you has no insurance coverage whatsoever, and you have un uninsured motorists that would cover you in the same fashion as if the liability party would have insurance. Uninsured. Uh, underinsured. Underinsured. Un underinsured is if the party who caused your injury did not have sufficient coverage, then under your own policy, you can tap into that as well and make an additional recovery to help offset your expenses. So so let's say you had a million dollars in damages and the guy that ran into you has a thirty thousand dollar policy. Then you would hope you had some underinsured exactly. motorist coverage for the other for the deficiency, yeah. Yeah, the other nine hundred and seventy thousand dollars. Yeah, thousand yeah, dollars. So um Okay, so uh, that's how uh, UM and, and uh, UIM works. Um, what, what, what about liability? How does just which what, what which is what most people have? They just have liability. How does that work? Well, liability works if you 
are responsible for a injury or accident, then your liability coverage will cover your de the damages you cause up to thirty thousand dollars if you choose to buy a minimum limits policy, and that's why it's important to buy a bigger policy because let's suppose you cause an accident where there's multiple cars involved, your policy will only cover thirty thousand, and you may have a hundred thousand dollars in damages that you might be responsible for and ultimately get sued if you don't have enough coverage. Um, all right, what about uh, PIP or PIP? Personal injury protection is a benefit that you choose to, if you choose to purchase it under your policy, it provides benefits for medical expenses. The minimum that they sell starts off at uh, $2,500 per person. Uh, a lot of people have higher limits. I personally have 25000 in PIP benefits because I know the cost of health care out there is expensive. Uh, and uh, lots of times people come in and the other side has no exactly uh, no type of coverage no type of coverage at all and the situation for someone who causes your accident or injuries if they have no coverage whatsoever whatsoever then you have to rely on your personal health insurance or any personal injury protection benefits that you may have uh, also that's why it is important to carry uninsured motorist coverage because if you do have uninsured motorist coverage, that would also help you defray the cost of your medical expenses. Well, and, and the way UM and UIM work is is that covers you if the other person's at fault. Correct. Right? What if you what if you're the one at fault? If you're the one at fault, uh, then uh, your liability would take care of the other person. No, but what about your your medical and your your lost wages and your other damages? Yeah, if the other if I am at fault for the accident, that's why it's important to have personal injury protection coverage, med pay, uninsured motorist coverage. You know, any type of coverage you can get, you can never have enough insurance coverage. But but the UM only covers if the other person's at fault. I'm right, saying. right. It's your, your fault. One of the advantages of PIP is that it's It'll, it's no fault, right? Right, it's no fault. It provides it benefits to you and you, to help you know feed your family, right. pay, pay some bills, whatever. Right. Let's, let's say you can't income. work. Let's say you can't work. Right. Your liability is not going to pay you. Right. It will help also help cover your lost wages up to the minimum or the maximum that you choose. Uh, most people have a minimum of twenty five hundred. I would strongly suggest that they get five or even ten thousand dollars of coverage. Yeah. If you talk to your agent, it's not that expensive at all. I used to have twenty five hundred dollars. I asked my agent how much to double it. She says a dollar. I said, well, how much? <laughs> how much to triple it? She goes another dollar. Well, I tripled it back at the time. Yeah. So I mean, for another it's... two bucks, I got ten thousand in coverage as opposed to twenty five hundred. Right. Yeah. It's not much expensive, just like getting higher limits on most things. It's right. just not much more money. You know, maybe maybe it's more than a dollar. You know, for right. most people, maybe it's ten dollars or twenty or thirty. Mm -hmm. But still, for the amount of coverage you get, it's kind of ridiculously Correct. kind of ridiculous not to get it. Exactly. All right. And then, what's the difference between MedPay and and PIP? MedPay provides payments to medical providers directly. If you make a recovery against a third party carrier, then you're required to reimburse. Uh, the MedPay ca carrier, where that's PIP, it pays you directly regardless, and it's not subject to subrogation. Okay. That's pretty succinct. All right. And if, if anybody has any questions, they can email you at what? I think you always email me at lupe at hermanandherman.com, or I kind of tease people. You can always call on my cell phone at 688-LUPE. That's really my number. <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully you won't have too many people calling you with questions. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, let's try to wrap up here since we've got such a late start and we're almost out of time. Uh, let me just mention um, our scholarship which we uh, for 2019, which we had hoped to launch in January. It looks like it's going to be probably February until we can get that launched. But just stay tuned and we'll give you the details on that. Um, and our Valentine's Day giveaway, we will post something about that later on today, I've been promised. Uh, so uh, just uh, check back later today, and we're going to start uh, start the giveaway for our Valentine's Day. Um, it'll be something for like couples or something, right? Mm -hmm. All right. And finally, just a reminder to register to vote. Um, you know, we've got two years till the next um, two years till the next election. Uh, well, not quite two years, a year and nine months or something. So. Uh, but you know you got to be registered way ahead of time to uh, to make sure you can you know we want everybody early voting next time so we want people voting in October um, or even voting by mail in September I think you can vote as early as September by mail so 
you know, and need to be registered before that. Um, you need to be able to check and make sure you're still registered because, you know, the people in power in Austin keep finding ways to purge the voter rolls to, uh, you know, people that think they're registered suddenly find out they're not. Um, and remember also 2020 is going to be a redistricting year. Uh, so whoever controls the legislature in Texas will get to control how the districts are divided up. And it doesn't look like the Supreme Court's going to help us much on how bad the districts have been gerrymandered uh, by the Republicans. Um, the lower courts have all struck it down and said that the, uh, you know, the, the whole intent, obviously, of of the Republican-led legislature was to carve districts out so that they could win all the time and that they could discriminate against minorities um, and people who tend to vote Democratic. So the lower courts have struck them all down. The Supreme Court either doesn't want to hear it or they've they've upheld one of them. So there's still some still some appeal uh, appellate stuff going on, but. It doesn't look like the Supreme Court is going to be our friend. So um, the best way to cure this is just go vote the bastards out of office. And so that's why we need everybody registered to vote uh, in 2020 so we can vote the bastards out of office. So anyway, if you haven't registered to vote or if you know anybody that hasn't registered to vote, uh, please, uh, please get registered. Please convince them to go register. Um, and I think what we're going to do is we're going to get a, um, uh, uh, you have to get licensed to, I believe, or some kind of certificate to go out and register people to vote. So we are going to get a, um, like, a, I don't know, what, whatever, deputized. You have to get deputized to register people to vote. So we're going to work on something where we can actually register people to vote here. Um, and we'll post something about that uh, in the near future, too. So. Anyway, uh, that's it for now. Uh, Lupa, thanks for coming by. Thank you, sir. Appreciate the time. Appreciate your help. And um, want to say goodbye to everybody. Goodbye, everyone. Remember, if you need any, any type of legal service, we're available 24-7. Uh, always please call Herman or Herman at 882-4357. All righty. Um, well, until next time. Um, I will be here next time. Yeah. Until next week. Uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in, and we'll see you in. See you next week.